You know Pinocchio, right? Little wooden boy, nose gets bigger when he lies, wishes to one day become a real boy. Pinocchio is an old story, though not quite as old as you might expect. The original story was written in 1883 by an author named Carlo Lorenzini, better known by his pen name Carlo Collodi. It's one of the best-selling books of all time, as evidenced by the fact that we're still talking about it 140 years later. Yet I doubt many people watching this video have actually read it. I certainly hadn't. Like every story that Disney gets its hands on, the version that you're familiar with is a little bit different to the original. Pinocchio is actually alive before the Blue Fairy shows up, he's just carved from a randomly already sentient log. Jiminy Cricket is smashed by a hammer the first time Pinocchio meets him and the rest of his appearances are as a ghost. The fox and the cat try to murder Pinocchio by hanging him from a tree, but it doesn't go so well because, you know, he's made of wood. The overall concept is the same, Pinocchio gets into a series of misadventures where he learns what it means to be good and righteous and as a reward for his good behaviour and bravery is turned into a real boy in the end. Like most children's stories, The Adventures of Pinocchio is a morality lesson, in this case quite a simple one. Behave well, be wary of dangerous strangers, listen to your parents and you'll be rewarded. When Pinocchio behaves badly, like running away from Geppetto or selling his school book to see a puppet show, bad things happen to him. When he does good things, listening to his father or trying to save him when he gets eaten by a sea monster, good things happen to him. Thus, in theory, the child reader takes away the same lesson. The book is surprisingly decent for a century-old children's book, it's got a couple genuine chuckles out of me, and I'll be honest, I liked it way more than the Disney version, which I find has not aged gracefully at all. Not for any, like, problematic issues, it's just really old, slow and boring. Do you like it, Figaro? No. You do, don't you, Cleo? Well, we'll leave it to a little wooden head. So anyway, 140 years later, a Korean game developer came along and dared to ask the question we had all been pondering, what would happen if you made Pinocchio a twink? Pinocchio became public domain in 1940. That's probably why old Walt made the film in the first place, because he didn't have to pay licensing fees. And as such, there has been an ungodly amount of Pinocchio adaptations. Pinocchio in space. Pinocchio on Broadway. Pinocchio, but it's just a regular Italian man. Through some bizarre aligning of the planets, we had three high-profile Pinocchio movies last year. We had a remake of the Disney classic starring Tom Hanks, which is... a mess. A darker Pinocchio story set in fascist Italy directed by Guillermo del Toro. And then, finally, the best one, a Russian bootleg called Pinocchio A True Story starring Polly Shore as the voice of Pinocchio. Father, when can I leave to be on my own? I've got the whole world to see. Pinocchio also cameoed in Puss in Boots' Last Wish, along with my favourite character in the film, Morality Cricket, because they can't legally call him Jiminy. But I think of all the Pinocchio adaptations I've seen, Lies of P may be the most ambitious. What if we combined Pinocchio and Dark Souls? That should work, right? Uh, yeah, everyone had a bit of a chuckle when the trailer for Sexy Pinocchio Bloodborne dropped, but I'm here with the devastating news that yes, it actually is very good. One of my great feelings as a game critic is that I've never quite gotten into the Souls-like genre. I've never played Dark Souls, and I'm sure it's some sort of gamer crime that this is my first foray into the genre. But I can tell you that this game rules. It's one of the hardest games I've ever played, no question. The last run of bosses took me like a full week to beat, but the combat has such rhythm and such... Okay, you don't need me to explain why the Souls-like genre is good. You're watching a game analysis video on YouTube. I'm more interested in this. Lies of P. It's a weird name, right? Are they trying to hide the fact that this is a Pinocchio game? What exactly are the lies of P anyway? Well, I've got my theories, so let's discuss, shall we? Phil spoiler warning. Duh. The first thing you see when you start the game is a memorial to Carlo Collodi, which is very interesting because of how the game adapts and recontextualizes the story of Pinocchio. On the one hand, it is an intensely faithful adaptation. Every character is here, shuffled around and put into a different perspective, but here, 
Gepetto, the Blue Fairy, the Fox and the Cat, Lampwick, Magnifucal, pretty much every boss and every NPC in the game is an echo of the original novel, down to even mundane details. Like an entire game mechanic seemingly based around an early line in the novel about Pinocchio chasing butterflies. At the same time, the game being in memory of Carlo Collodi seems odd, because the core morals of the game seem to be in direct conflict with the original novel. In fact, I'd argue that it serves as a rebuttal to the original story. Time and time again it shows the moral lessons Pinocchio learns in the original story to be hollow, naive, and not truly reflective of reality. Collodi has some very black and white moral values he wants to instill into young readers. For example, in chapter 21, Pinocchio, after attempting to steal some grapes from a farm is caught in a trap, and a talking glowworm shows up to teach him a lesson about stealing. Poor little fellow, replied the glowworm, stopping to look at him in pity. How came you to be caught in this trap? I stepped into this lonely field to take a few grapes, and are those grapes yours? No. Who has taught you to take things that do not belong to you? I was hungry. Hunger, my boy, is no reason for taking something which belongs to another. It's true, it's true, cried Pinocchio in tears. I won't do it again. After this, Pinocchio is forced by the farmer to work as the guard dog for a night as punishment for his attempted thievery. This is the structure of the entire book. Pinocchio does something bad. Someone tells him why it's bad, he faces the punishment, and then he promises he won't do it again. Every chapter has a lesson it's trying to impart, and this is a book for young children, so we're not dealing with any metaphors or subtext here. Collodi has a lesson he wants to teach children, he's going to scare them into submission. If you ever try to steal, you will get caught and you will be punished. If you ever trust a suspicious stranger, you will be sent to jail for four months. If you ever run away from school, a green ogre will try and eat you. If you don't work hard and behave well, you will literally turn into a donkey. Yes, all of that happens in the book. The most on the nose of these, yes that was intentional, is lying. Probably the most famous thing about Pinocchio is that his nose gets longer when he lies. In both the Disney version and the original story, the moral is clear. Lying is bad, you'll always be found out, and the more you keep lying, the more trouble you're going to get into. Thus, we get to the first, most obvious interpretation of the title. The Lies of P are the Lies of Pinocchio. Within the world of Lies of P, Pinocchio is not the only puppet. He's actually never named Pinocchio in the game for reasons beyond me, but we're just going to call him Pinocchio for simplicity's sake. Puppets in this world are commonplace, and the inciting incident of the story is something called the Puppet Frenzy, where all the puppets went mad and started killing everyone. Puppets are supposed to be bound by the Grand Covenant, a sort of retro version of Asimov's laws of robotics. Puppets may not harm humans, they must obey humans, and they cannot tell lies. Pinocchio is special because he's not bound by these rules, and the game puts particular emphasis on his ability to lie. There is a nose that grows when he does, but unfortunately it's not the one on his face. With that groundwork set, you might expect that lies, just like in the original story, are something that you're supposed to avoid. Lies are bad, right? Well, well, that might sound like a good lesson to teach kids. Here in the adult world, we know that things are not nearly so black and white. Not every lie is so inherently bad. When a woman dying of a disease turning her to stone asks you to find her missing baby and it turns out to just be a puppet, do you break that truth to her or do you smile and nod and say, yep, that's a cute baby? When an old woman stares at a portrait of her in her youth and asks if she's still as beautiful as she once was, we all know that she's not. But you're not going to say that, are you? Based on the black and white morality of the original story, these are lies, and lies are bad. But the game's argument is that lies do not make you bad. Lies are simply a tool. They can be used for good or for evil, just like any tool can. Another black and white moral imparted by Claudia in the book is about listening to your parents, made clearest when the talking cricket imparts this piece of critical advice. Woe to boys who refuse to obey their parents and run away from home. They will never be happy in this world and when they are older they will be very sorry for it. Almost every problem in the book arises from Pinocchio's refusal to listen to his parents, be it his creator Geppetto or later in the book the Blue Fairy who adopts him as her son. Once again, this is a fine moral to try and teach to children, but it's built upon a dangerous assumption that's not always true in the real world, that your parents actually know and want what's best for you. Geppetto, as you may expect, is one of the most important characters in the game. He's the creator of not only Pinocchio, but of almost every puppet in the city. 
Early on, you rescue him from a donkey who's sure he has something to do with the frenzy, and from then on, he becomes the primary quest giver for the game as you work together to try and save the city of Kratz. But the further you get into the game, the worse the situation gets, the more and more it becomes clear that Geppetto is not some innocent bystander in this crisis. He knows things that he shouldn't know, shows up in places he shouldn't be able to show up, and all throughout he keeps repeating the same thing. That's why my only wish is that you stay a good boy. No resentment. No lies. Don't lie, don't trust dangerous people, be a good boy. All of the same lessons as the original book, only as you progress further the lessons become more hollow. You have to kill a lot of people in this game, can you still call yourself a good boy? By the strict black and white morality of Collodi's story? No. You have been telling lies and that should make you bad, but they don't. They help people. You have been trusting dangerous people because the reality is that in a world like this one, everyone left is a dangerous person and sometimes your survival depends on trusting the untrustworthy. Geppetto's insistence on this mantra, his black and white morality that make you a good boy, are in conflict with the reality of the world. So maybe the lies of Pete are not the lies of Pinocchio the character, but rather the lies of Pinocchio the story, and the hollow truths of its morality tales. Be wary of dangerous people, and always be a good boy for me. Of course, there's another angle we can take with this, because I mentioned that Round 8 the developers are Korean, right? And that opens up an entire different avenue for us. Because it turns out that P, or rather P in Korean, means blood. And boy, that's an interesting coincidence, isn't it? Let's take another look at this situation through the lens of the lies of blood. And with that title alone, Geppetto, your dad, is starting to look a lot more suspicious, isn't he? Like any Souls-like game, there is a single all-important currency that you do all of your shopping and levelling up with. In this case, that currency is Ergo. You collect it from dead enemies, you find it lying around in a crystallised form, it's what gives Sophia, our blue fairy, her powers, and it's what allows all puppets to function in the first place. It's also built on a lie, the lie that nobody knows what it is or where it came from. Because the truth is, plenty of people do know, the truth is just far too earth-shattering to share. Ergo is humanity itself, caught in crystal by the petrification disease, the disease that's turning people into stone. Puppets are powered by the souls of dead people, including Pinocchio. It's a late game revelation that recontextualizes a lot of the story. Maybe that lady with her puppet baby isn't so crazy after all. And Geppetto, as the creator of the puppets, has always known about it. In fact, he's counting on it. Geppetto once had a son, a real son. Carlo, who died in a tragic accident, and that boy's ergo, his soul if you will, was taken from him and put into Pinocchio. Lies of P isn't the first adaptation to take this direction, that Geppetto wants a wooden son so badly because he lost his real one. In fact, for reasons beyond me, the Disney remake also includes this detail, but Lies of P is certainly the one that takes the darkness of that implication to its most natural conclusion. Because Geppetto doesn't want a puppet recreation of his son, he wants the real boy. In the original story, becoming a real boy is presented as a reward for Pinocchio, something the Blue Fairy will grant him if he's a good boy. Going from an awesome wooden immortal to a boring fleshy human doesn't seem like much of a reward to me, but whatever, he'll be able to grow up and have a normal life and all that nonsense. The story of a robot who wants to become a human is a very common one in science fiction and is often used to explore deeper themes about what being human means. Like, yeah, hang on. Just one a sec. There we go. Like Data in Star Trek. Data is an android, superior to humans in many ways, yet his one wish in life is to become a human. Well, that does trouble me. Do you consider yourself superior to us? I am superior, sir, in many ways. But I would gladly give it up to be human. Nice to meet you, Pinocchio. But Data doesn't want to become human as a reward. In fact, he explicitly turns that down at one point. 
Rather, his quest to become human is more emotional and philosophical, learning what it means to be human by laughing and crying and loving and dying. Despite being the symbol for this kind of story, the original Pinocchio is not like this. It's a fantasy story, not a science fiction story. There is very little word spent on exploring why exactly Pinocchio wants to become a real boy, just that he wants to, it's better for some reason. It's a reward for good behaviour, it's not a lifelong goal. Lies of P isn't the first Pinocchio story to take a more sci-fi approach to Pinocchio's quest to become human, but for my money it is the most interesting because of how it takes Pinocchio's flaws in the original books and shows that they are what truly makes him human, not some blue fairy spell. If machines are unable to lie, then surely lying is an inherently human act. What could be more human than disobedience? Hand in hand with the lies you can tell is your humanity. Rather than being a reward at the end, Pinocchio's humanity is a quest throughout the game. If you act more human, then you'll start to be more human. After all, you already have the soul of a human inside you, so it's not exactly unprecedented. Your humanity will increase from many different things. Helping people, lying, expressing emotion, listening to music, killing murderers. Because being a human and being a good boy are not opposite sides of a coin. They are two different things entirely. Sometimes the more human things to do, like lashing out in anger, are not the good boy thing to do that Geppetto would want. You're like... The ending where you become a real boy is the unabashedly bad ending because it's the ending where you do everything that you're told to do, the ending where you stay a puppet. After all, if you follow all of the black and white morality of the book, do everything that your parents tell you without question, doesn't that make you more of a puppet than ever? A being without their own free will? An interesting detail in the original book is that unlike the Disney version, Pinocchio isn't transformed into a real boy, rather he falls asleep as a puppet and wakes up as a boy, in a different bed and a new body. The old puppet body still exists, it's just a lifeless puppet now. I wonder where the old Pinocchio of Wood has hidden himself. There he is, answered Geppetto, and he pointed to a large puppet leaning against a chair, head turned to one side, arms hanging limp and legs twisted under him. After a long, long, long look, Pinocchio said to himself with great content, how ridiculous I was as a puppet and how happy I am now that I have become a real boy. The end. And if you too become a real boy, that's exactly what happens to you. Geppetto never wanted Pinocchio, he wanted Carlo. And in the ending where you do as he asks, he rips your heart out and uses it to bring his real son back to life. But in this ending, Carlo is nothing more than a puppet, a lifeless shell who will do whatever Geppetto says, even murdering every friend you've made along the way. Because a good boy listens to his papa. The truly human thing to do in this moment of decision is to fight for your own life. It's to see the man standing in front of you, not as your father who must be listened to and respected no matter what, but as a deceptive and monstrous man who cannot be trusted. If being human means anything in this world, it means being able to make your own choices and determine your own future. The best ending of the game is the one where you stay Pinocchio, still made of metal and wood and clockwork, but more human than the lies of flesh and blood. It's the hardest ending, quite literally it means fighting the hardest boss in the game, a grim reflection of what your real humanity would look like underneath. The lie of blood is the idea that blood is required to make you a real boy. The truth is that the puppets have always been human. They could always laugh, cry, love and die. Pinocchio was a real boy from the moment he was made. I cannot pretend to understand everything that happens in the story of this game. Much as I would love to explain it to you, I simply cannot explain what is going on with this. I've got nothing for you. The hands are like puppeteers. God is a puppeteer of us all, and the big glowy flesh blob is Jesus? 
Pinocchio is Jesus? Nope, I'm not even going to try. It's the ways in which the game adapts and flips the original source material that makes it so interesting to me. A lot of dark adaptations of children's media end up in the same realm as Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, just tasteless nonsense for shock value. Lies of P is more than that. It takes the core concepts of the original story and uses them and reshapes them into a story that's genuinely compelling for us grown-ups. The idea sounds silly, Pinocchio Bloodborne, but by taking the material completely seriously, they have crafted, in my opinion, a piece of art which surpasses the original. And they also have a post credit scene which is such a massive swing, but god damn it, they've earned my trust, so hopefully I'll see you next time when we can discuss The Wizard of Yarnum. Thank you for watching, and a very special thank you to my patrons for your continued support. If you'd like to see your name up here or get access to Patreon exclusive videos, please consider signing up, it would mean a lot to me. Either right now or soon after I'll be releasing a companion video to this one where I rank every Pinocchio, or at least a lot of Pinocchios. So if that sounds interesting, you can find that link in the description below or click on the box. I have plenty more videos around here if you're interested, so why not click on this one about Very Short Tricks, that recent Star Trek animated thing on YouTube that was very bad. Or if you're into more story analysis of games, why not this video about Starfield?